Almost 94 million miles from Earth, a powerful light show on the surface of the sun. The bursts of radiation are the strongest solar flares so far this year, but issues flaring up back on Earth. Earth's magnetic field is going through a long G3 storm. It's one of the strongest we have seen in months. This G3 storm changed our atmosphere with over a hundred times more radiation belt energy than normal. When that much energy is floating around, it pushes the system closer to breaking point. And sure enough, the ground has already answered back. A magnitude 6 struck Japan. Kamchatka shook with a 6.1 and kept swarming. And the Philippines got rocked by a massive 6.9. So there's an 11 year solar cycle and right now we're kind of at the peak of one of those cycles of activity. Pressure is building and not just beneath our feet. Now, sun is firing plasma waves directly at us. And this time, the planet isn't ready to take the hit. Earthquakes in the Pacific Ring of Fire. But before we look at what's on the way, let's talk about what has already shaken the planet in just the past few days and why it matters right now. The first big shock came out of Japan. On October 7th, a strong magnitude 6 earthquake struck offshore. The depth was just under 50 kilometers, which spared the coast from a major tsunami threat, but the location was enough to make people uneasy. This is the same general fault system that ruptured in March 2011, when a magnitude 9.1 unleashed the Great Tohoku disaster. Anytime seismic energy returns here, alarms go off. Japan has had relatively few major quakes in 2025, so this one felt like a wake-up call. Only a day earlier, on October 6, Kamchatka in Russia was rocked by a 6.1 quake. And it wasn't alone. This entire region has been swarming with quakes for weeks, with magnitude 4s, 5s, and now another 6 stacked on top. If you pull up the seismic maps, the cluster looks almost unreal with dozens of quakes packed together off the peninsula. Scientists are still debating whether these are fading aftershocks from the huge 7.8 in September, or whether the crust here is still building towards something more. Remember, this is the same place that ruptured in 1952 with one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded, a monster that many agencies pinned near a magnitude 9. That history cannot be ignored. Adding more heat to the mix, Multiple volcanoes in Kamchatka are currently erupting. Since August, several cones have been spitting ash and lava, and the activity hasn't slowed. So here we have swarms of earthquakes shaking the ground and volcanoes exploding above it, all in the same hotspot. That's not just something you can ignore. That's a region signaling instability on a large scale. Now shift south to the Philippines. Just as September ended, a massive 6.9 quake slammed the region. It remains one of the largest single events of 2025 so far. People felt it widely, and the timing was impossible to ignore. It lined up almost perfectly with the peak of the long G3 geomagnetic storm. It was maybe just a coincidence, but when you see energy build in the atmosphere and then huge quakes release across the Pacific within hours, you have to wonder if Earth's systems are interacting in ways we don't fully track. Indonesia joined the list too, with a magnitude 6 near Bali. Another jolt, another reminder that the Pacific Ring of Fire is restless on all fronts. If you consider them together, Japan 6, Kamchatka 6.1 with its endless swarms, the Philippines 6.9, and Indonesia 6, you see a pattern that stretches across thousands of miles. The Ring of Fire is shaking almost in sequence. And don't forget the backdrop. All of this happened after Earth endured that marathon G3 storm at the very end of September. For nearly 72 hours, our planet's magnetic field was hammered, flooding the radiation belts with more than a hundred times the normal electron flux. That energy doesn't vanish overnight. It sits in the system, waiting to interact with Earth's crust, oceans, and atmosphere. That's why we keep seeing energetic releases even days later. If you check the USGS earthquake feed from last week, two regions stand out immediately. The Philippines carries the crown for the strongest quake. Kamchatka takes the lead for the most activity, with an endless list of fours and fives, and now another six. Japan's quake may not have been the largest, 
but its location near the 2011 rupture makes it the most unsettling. And Indonesia adds weight to the argument that the entire Western Pacific is in motion. So here we are in the second week of October, with the ground already proving how unstable things are. Quakes have struck Japan, Russia, the Philippines, and Indonesia almost back to back. Volcanoes are erupting, and the atmosphere above us remains heavily charged from the recent storm. Everything is primed for more energy to move through the system. And that brings us to the next problem, because while Earth keeps shaking from below, the sun is about to strike from above. Solar storms send plasma waves to Earth. In the last few days of October 3 and 4, the sun lit up with activity. Filaments snapped, plasma erupted, and entire arcs of solar material blasted outward. Observatories caught it in multiple wavelengths, and the images showed what looked like a chain reaction, one eruption triggering the next. First came a bright explosion, then a filament tearing loose like a canyon of fire, followed by more destabilization across the surface. Three eruptions in less than two days. And they were not just pretty shows for the telescopes. Those eruptions hurled real plasma into space, and modeling now suggests that not one, but three separate waves of it are heading toward Earth. Think about that for a second. The planet is already sitting on edge, the radiation belts are still supercharged from the September G3 storm, and now three solar waves are lined up with our orbit. The UK Met Office ran the numbers, and the models show a series of bumps in plasma density sweeping across Earth between October 7th and 9th. The first wave is subtle but noticeable, the second builds more, and the third is projected to be the strongest of the three. The timing puts us right in the middle of that window right now, with the next waves inbound. It's a bit like watching a weather radar and seeing three storm fronts layered one behind the other, except this isn't rain. It's charged particles slamming into the magnetic field. Now, the top-down view of the solar models shows those plasma clouds lined up with Earth's orbit, and when you tilt the view to see it vertically, most of the material is heading slightly north, away from our direct line. That sounds comforting, but don't let it fool you. Even when the brunt of an eruption misses, the fringes of those waves can still hit us hard. Our planet doesn't need a direct strike to feel the pressure. And with three waves in sequence, the chance of geomagnetic disturbances goes way up. This is also happening right after the October full moon. That matters, because whenever the moon moves through Earth's magnetotail, the system gets stirred up. Scientists call it a plus one effect. It's not dramatic by itself, but when you add it on top of already high radiation flux and inbound solar plasma, it makes a difference. It tips the scales towards stronger geomagnetic activity. So put it together. We have got a planet still buzzing from a 7-2 hour G3 storm, multiple earthquakes hitting the ring of fire, and now three waves of solar plasma forecast to brush past Earth in less than 72 hours. Even if most of the material travels north, the overlap of timing, energy, and lunar alignment means the next couple of days could be volatile. The signs are all there. The sun has already fired. The waves are already moving through space. And Earth is waiting to see just how much of that energy collides with us. What happens when these sun blasts slam into a planet that's not just charged, but supercharged? Full moon. Supercharge. What comes next? It's the timing that has made everything stranger here. Look at the sky right now in October. The moon has been sitting in Pisces, slowly moving into direct opposition with the sun in Virgo. That opposition is what we call the full moon. It's simple enough. But the real detail that matters is where the moon actually travels during this phase. It doesn't just shine bright. It swings right into Earth's magnetic tail, which is the long, invisible extension of our magnetosphere that stretches millions of kilometers into space. Think of it as the ghostly wake Earth drags behind as solar wind flows past. When the moon moves through it, plasma flows change, currents shift, and the entire system reacts. That's why researchers call the full moon a plus one modifier. On its own, the full moon doesn't create storms, but it amplifies whatever is already happening. The tides get stronger. The charged radiation belts get more unstable. If you add solar plasma waves to this equation, you get a cocktail of heightened energy waiting to erupt. And this time, the moon is doing more than just hanging out opposite the sun. It's close to Neptune and Saturn, 
two giants that are themselves moving toward a rare conjunction next year. To the eye through a telescope, Saturn's rings glow, Neptune shines faint and blue, and right nearby, the full moon blazes like a spotlight. All that energy is lining up in one part of the sky. These alignments add stress to Earth's space environment at exactly the same time the sun is firing multiple plasma waves at us. So what's happening above our heads right now? Satellites are already showing it. Earth's outer radiation belt, the zone packed with high-energy electrons, is charged to levels more than 100 times normal. These are not small bumps. We are talking exponential leaps in flux. Instruments show jumps from about 100 particles to almost 10,000 particles per cubic centimeter per second. That's a massive storm reservoir waiting to dump into the ionosphere when the next solar shock arrives. And when that dump happens, you feel it on the ground. Not just as data points, but as geomagnetic storms, the swings in Earth's magnetic field that power auroras, interfere with radio, and sometimes overload power grids. We saw it during the seven two-hour G3 storm at the start of October, when auroras poured across Canada and Alaska, dazzling sky watchers who rushed to share their photos. Now the belts are reloaded, the moon is stirring the system, and the sun is about to deliver the next trigger. Forecasts suggest at least a G1 storm from these plasma waves. That's the baseline. But add in the full moon effect and the fact that we are in October, the season of the Russell McFerrin effect, and the odds rise. For those not familiar, the Russell McFerrin effect is a seasonal boost in how well Earth couples with solar wind. It happens near the equinoxes, and October is prime time. Energy from the solar wind just sinks in deeper. It means the same blast that might register as a G1 in another month could behave more like a G2, or even briefly spike to a G3 now. And remember, we are still at solar maximum. Sunspot counts are high, eruptions are frequent, and the odds of back-to-back -back impacts are greater than usual. The three plasma waves forecasted from the October 3rd to 4th eruptions are only one part of the story. More eruptions can happen at any moment. The sun doesn't wait for our calendar. What does this mean for you? If you are sky watching, you may get auroras, though the full moon's brightness will wash out the faintest colors but stronger storms can still break through, especially in higher latitudes. Cameras may pick up what the naked eye misses, so photographers are already on alert. If you are sensitive to space weather, the next couple of nights could feel heavy. People report everything from headaches to sleep issues during geomagnetic storms. Science is still debating how much of that is real, but the fact remains that Earth's electromagnetic environment is shifting rapidly right now. Now tell us, have you felt anything unusual during these storms? Let us know in the comment section below. If you want more updates as these solar storms hit, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss what's coming. Goodbye for now.